very good evening to you. Thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. We are coming to you live from Nairobi, Kenya, and I hope you've enjoyed your day. This is the very last day of November, and as we're getting into December and wrapping up the year, I want us to discuss second chances. We all want second chances, either at something that you want to pursue for your career, and even in our personal lives, there is something that we always wish we had a second chance at. And I want us to discuss this with an agency that has created that opportunity for the youth, and particularly in the pageantry industry. So joining me this evening is uh, Dr. Samson Misango, who is the CEO of uh, Second Option Agency, Karibu Sara Daktari. Asante Sana, and thank you for your kind introduction. Yes, yes. you're welcome. And right next to Daktari, we have the very lovely Miss Second Option Africa, Wanji Olasa. Karibu Wanji. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for having me. It's such a pleasure to have both of you in studio. So as you've heard, he runs the agency Second Option, which basically gives the youth second chances at pursuing their dreams and focusing on their talents, especially in the modeling and the pageantry industry. Because as we all know, so many people pursue this. And in the past, we've had some very strict qualifications. Now the world is expanding and new and more agencies are coming up to redefine what the pageantry industry means. So I want you to go to our social media platforms, which is at Y254. We've posed a question for you. We want to rewrite destiny. How are you rewriting your destiny? And if you had a second chance at anything today, what would you do with it? So talk to me on uh, our platforms at Y254, that is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll sample some of your comments as we progress with the show. So I think to kickstart the conversation, I want to understand what in particular made you, Dr. Samson, want to start this agency? Because you've focused on second chances and giving people an opportunity to pursue their talents and develop new skills. What inspired the, the idea behind it? Uh, that's a good place to start from. Huh? Um, I am a doctor by profession, uh, a surgeon actually, uh, with um, a medical center called MESUV, Medical Surgery and Neurology Center, right here in Nairobi. And among one of the, um, uh, the, the, the ideals behind, behind this uh, medical center, uh, our mission basically is to be able to, 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 to combine uh, what you call uh, social responsibility, okay, corporate social responsibility we call ACSR, that basically touches on uh, disadvantaged people, plants, uh, the environment, and basically just being a responsible human being. And uh, in line with that, uh, initially I used to do a lot of um, community service that was giving medical services to people outside them. But this was so cliche, everybody is doing it. Politicians are doing it and uh, uh, one day there's this uh, young person who had finished school who came and uh, was looking for a job. And I knew her past life in college, she was a model. And I asked her, you are a very good model. Why don't you do modeling instead of looking for a job? And she said, the modeling industry is wicked. So I asked, what do you mean? She said, uh, it's very exploitative. Uh, nobody really wants to make you advance. They all want to take advantage of you. I said, oh, that's a sad story. What if, with your experience, you have an agency which basically does things differently from how it was done for you. She said, uh, having an agency costs money. And right there, I saw a CSR. So I told her, why don't you run an agency, I'll sponsor it, make it be done in a different way from how you'd have wanted it done. Okay. And that's how we began the agency. And we said we're going to give it a name because we are giving people second chances. Okay. We are giving, we are calling it second option because according to her and the story which was there, all the modeling agencies that she knows, in other words, the first options which are available are all basically lost. So I said we are going to present ourselves as the second option which we will do differently to redefine the modeling industry. And that is how we defined our mission and our vision. Because we, we basically want to identify 
uh, these people who are talented, but they have a story which basically has made them basically either stop in what it is they are doing, and we're calling them disadvantaged, not because they have any physical disabilities or others, but because they have been exploited and they are neglected and nobody talks about them. Mm -hmm. So he said, we will give you that second chance in the entertainment industry, give you a platform to do things that entertain others, and you get rewarded as you do what it is you are doing. Okay? Yeah. And uh, that's why we call it second option agency. And right below there we call it grab that chance because when you're given a, uh, an opportunity, uh, you're saying it embracing second chances as you're calling it, grab that chance. Yeah. So that's how I found myself in this industry of the modeling world. I was an outsider. I mean, I was a sponsor operating from behind and these ones were running it. So how did I get myself into the front line? Now, that's where the story changes a bit, huh? mm. because we had I our first... I also want to know maybe what year exactly did you start I all we this? We began this in 20, 2018. Um, we registered the, 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 the agency on 10th of May, 2018. Okay? After having had a discussion for about uh, three months, huh? uh, looking at what would, be best, what would best capture our logo, what would best capture our motto, what would best capture the name. So this was something very authentic, very generic, okay? We didn't go to somewhere on some social media or uh, some G, G, G for, for to Google <laughs> which name should we use. It came, we developed our mission generically and our vision, okay? So we want to be that beacon of hope to people, okay? Going forward. Anybody looking around will see these glamorous people outside there and want to know what's their story. And then they get to hear the story from each of these different people. And when you are training, uh, the first models we used to recruit in that year 2018, we used to subject them to interviews, okay? We wanted people who have a story. Somebody would come and say, I, I've been selling this, I've come from broken homes. So everybody had a very powerful story before we recruit you. It was not just about money, okay? Then um, we had our first pageant in the year 2018, which we called a uh, uh, face of second option agency. And during that year, of course, we had only female uh, models uh, who were there uh, contesting. I even remember we had our first pageant in a, in, in a club called Avenida, because that was the easiest way to organize a pageant, okay? With the drunkards shouting and screaming, <laughs> okay? But it worked. And um, the male models for that year, we actually had to give them an incentive to turn up because to we had no male models. The pageantry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it was um, uh, um, uh, it was an, an unknown phenomenon for men in the modeling industry. They were just there to uh, here and there. So uh, the these managers that had. Um, tuned up with, uh, for that uh, year, uh, the one who made me open the agency, they taught me some, um, they did some character development for me, okay? Because, you know, I was outsider, looking insider, and I trusted them with everything. But they exploited our models. The same people who wanted to do things differently, they took money from the models, they never registered them. They took them for some job somewhere where I, nev I had no idea because what we thought was we would be giving them 80% from any jobs they get, the remaining 20%. But they would be going around. So it was a bit disappointing and I, I nearly shut down the agency mm -hmm. in that uh, after that uh, pageant of 2018 because um, um, it, it, it didn't look worth it. Huh? Um, so I actually closed the agency in December and said, this is not my thing. I thought I was uh, trying to build people, but these, these are actually young people who are just there. But in towards the end of January, the models who were in the agency, they began looking for me and asking me, now you promised us we are going to be a different agency. We believed you. you you've had a problem, but now we feel like orphans. What do we do? Because you've left it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that touched me. I said, okay, I uh, will uh, get another manager. Uh, I think she came in, twen in, in 2019, around February. 
she had no information on modeling. I just said, just manage these people, okay? Because they're with us, but I'll be a bit more involved. So we went through, she, we, because normally in our program, um, as an agency, we conduct uh, trainings every two weeks, okay? Because you said you are going to give models who have registered something of value. Mm. Not just to come and you go for pageant or you just a pretty face somewhere. Yeah. We want to teach you values. Mm. So we would have training every two weeks. We would uh, arrange for photo shoots every, every two months during those days for the ones who registered. We would uh, try and send you for activations uh, among some of my friends' companies. You just go and do something, you get paid some pocket money. And uh, we would give you a chance to participate in our end of the year pageant. But during the year, they, it is to develop your character, to build you as a model with a purpose. Eh? And the thing which we have been very, 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 very much uh, strongly on as an agency is CSR. So we used to do once a month, uh, we have a community project. Mm. As an agency, we go, we would tell the models to identify in the regions where they come from a child who is needy in a public school who requires school uniform. So we'll mobilize ourselves. I would have a budget. Every month, we go to a particular house. We donate. We, we, we get uniforms for that child in a public school. We give the family some uh, refreshments, some meal, and just have uh, some time with them. So we, we, we'd call, we used to call it a touch one child at a time in a public school. So that was our campaign. Mm. Uh, for the all of that year. Mm, that's 2019. 2019. And I feel like maybe we can talk more on that. Yes. And especially this processes that you're talking about. We can dive deeper in that as yes. we progress. And I love the fact that you've really mentioned so many things that have personally touched me. The fact that you're in a very different field. You're a surgeon in the medical industry and you've gone into a whole new uh, scope of uh, industry because you want to help people. You're driven by the fact that you're compassionate and you want to give people the opportunity. And the second option name. I like that because, you know, every other person will go to the maybe the most famous, most popular agency and they may not really take care of their needs in the best way possible. So I want to touch on that as we progress. And maybe some of the things that you've mentioned, especially with the developing the, the skills and the talent and getting people with a story. Those are some of the points that I've really loved. So maybe we can talk to the, the crowned winner of this year, Miss Wanji. So you, there was a pageant in Eldoret on 11th November and you won that pageantry. I know you're so happy about that. You're so pleased. So I just want to ask you, how did you get here? Maybe you can tell us your story briefly, how you got to even pick second option, why you felt like it was the best option for you and why you stuck with them to where you are right now. So the journey of second option begins in May. But before that, I used, I, I used to be a student at the Technical University of Kenya pursuing journalism and media studies. I wanted to, to be you, basically. And um, I studied for three years, after which mm -hmm. I realized I don't really... I'm not... Uh, well, I was into it, but I was kind of not loving it at the time. So I decided to quit... Stud well, no, not quit, mom, sorry. <laughs> Not and I feel like I'm sorry. That sounds very interesting. So I feel I've been told your mic has a slight issue. Okay. So I want us to fix that because I want us to get this story right. It's someone who's come from a diverse field as well and gone into something completely different. So I want us to fix that and then we can continue with that. Yeah. So meanwhile, we can talk about some of... You've talked about the process. You faced challenges and obviously it's been a journey. It's been a whole journey. Yes. And the fact that you were inspired from just being a sponsor behind the scenes to actively taking part in the process. Let's talk about that. How do you vet people and how do you ensure the manager that you put in place in 2019? How are you sure that this manager was now capable of handling the needs of the, the models and uh, really carrying forward your vision effectively? How have you done Good. the vetting <coughs> process? Good. Um, there's just one comment you made about um, the name and how people perceive the name. There are many people who come from marketing and tell me, oh, Dr. Terry, this name, second option, huh? it can't sell. People will not, people want the best. People do not want to hear about uh, 
you, you know the, what people normally say, uh, people don't want to hear about the second, they want the first. Where do you rename this rebrand? But I say, no, our identity is in the name. The name is not supposed to be for publicity or for whatever. We believe it, be, it represents something very deep for us. So I don't care what the marketers say. It is that interest that you have. Mm. Why second option? It's that a philosophy yes. that you have. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yes, we believe in actually having structures in the agency um, because since I began going into that modeling world, I began meeting with friends who have been in the modeling world and I would ask them, uh, what motivates you to actually go and contest a pageant? Huh? And when you win, what do you do with that crown? They say, oh, it gives me a chance to now go, I feel good, I can dress and I can go and uh, feel good. But I say, no, but what do you represent? There must yeah. be something that you represent for that year of your reign. Huh? And they say, no, it's an opportunity to make money. And but I like that because you see, no if we're being realistic, most people want it for the aesthetics. Yeah. I just want to, like personally, I was just telling her earlier, <laughs> I love the crown. And I would love to just participate for the crown. But it's very important for you to stand for something. Yeah. Because you're representing a whole generation. You're representing a whole agency. And there are people who are looking up to you. So I feel like before we continue, her mic has been fixed. Good. So she can tell us her story. You were just telling us you were a mass communication student at Technical mm -hmm. University. How did you make that move? I, I got lucky enough to do this job. When I was in school, I got a chance to work in an online media type of thing. And I worked for some time. I got a chance in some small radio. Well, I quitted the job, this interviewing job. And I got another chance <laughs> to do some radio presenting. Um, and I also didn't love it. So I was like, w then why am I studying journalism? To be a journalist, but I don't like the job. So I decided to just quit or not go to school just because I didn't feel aligned and that is when I reached out to Dr. Misango and um, after some time I mean we started like hanging out and after some time he introduced me to the agency he told me he has this agency and he thinks I fit for it and um, to be honest I told him nah no way I I'm not doing I'm not doing the runway stuff because I'm an online girl I love social media, and I've seen so much stuff with the models. People are pro people are asking you, are you a model for some favors, sexual favors, you know? And um, so him telling me that he wanted me to be a model, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and after some time, he managed to, con he told me the same story. He told me this is what I stand for, and this is what we do in the agency. And I was like, well, let me give it a try, because after all, I'm just at home. I'm 19 years, so I'm just like chilling. And um, that is when I, the auditions were going on at the time. So it was, I think, in Eldoret. And in May, I remember May the 13th, it was supposed to be Nairobi auditions. And best believe, I had started training two weeks before that. I didn't know anything about modeling. I didn't even have a heel. I didn't even know the right heel to use. And um, I, I coached, I mean, I had some trainers for the two weeks I trained. And... Um, I went for the audition. I chose to go to Nairobi. I mean, I knew there are some other counties which were a bit not so hard to win, but Nairobi is the most competitive county, and I chose it intentionally, to be honest with you. But he also pushed me. <laughs> he also pushed <laughs> me because <laughs> it was hard. Imagine being, being a new person and trying to pursue this new thing, not knowing anything, and you're going to audition. Of course, you, you're like, I might fail. And I'm, I'm scared of failure. Yeah. Um, and people, that's a very valid uh, fear, the fear of failure. So many people miss out on opportunities because they're so afraid. But I like the fact that you're saying he pushed you. Yeah. Because sometimes we do not see our potential and people around us can see what we have the capability of doing. And the fact that he went to somewhere that's challenging with zero experience, that's another thing that I find interesting about yeah. your story. Because... Most people will go to maybe Mandera and decide, you know, if they're going to be five people and they're picking three, at, at least, least I can <laughs> imagine number three. So that is also very inspiring. So what happened after you went for the auditions in Nairobi? How many people were there, first of all? Probably like more than 30. Mm -hmm. And um, I, my, my work was terrible at the time. It was terrible. But at least I'm confident. 
that was one at least because like I can answer questions and that is what made me pass the audition. I was in position four and I was so happy, I was so proud of myself, Christ. Because like everyone else has, do has been doing, when they were being asked questions, everyone is saying, I've done modeling for five years, I'm here, I've done it for two weeks and I'm past the audition. I was like, Christ, what is happening? And um, after that, now it's online challenges because now we had been, the first five in Nairobi, or well, every county, we had to do online challenges, which were three different things. Well, they, they were all videos, but the la no, the first two are videos. The last one was voting, where people had to vote for you. The first two were not so hard for me because it's just like being on camera and talking. Yeah, it was not so hard. But now the voting one where people have to vote for you, well, let me not lie, it was not so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you're popular. You have the numbers yeah. and you've been on social media. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy for you to engage with the, the masses and just yeah. activate them to support you. Mm -hmm. But I understand it was a challenge for you know the other contestants because one vote is 10 shillings and people are there with 2,000 votes. You, you're having 100. It was, it was a bit challenging. So... I managed to be position one in that um, online thing, online voting, and I got a sponsorship to the boot camp. So position one, uh, the girl, and the position one, the male, we got sponsorships. And actually, you wouldn't believe where they were, okay, never mind, where the people no, who were. No, you can tell us, please. See, the thing is, it, it's crazy because the, the us who got the sponsorship, myself and another guy, we are the, we are the ones who won. Oh. Yeah, you, you'll get his story. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I like this, I like this. So it was, y you really worked for it yeah. from the very get-go. It wasn't the like a last minute thing. When mm -hmm. November 11th and then that's when you're popping out. No. You had to start from May onwards. You were actively working and uh, trying to pursue this. So the, we are past now the online challenge thing. I know now I have two more tasks, the boot camp and the runway, the main day. And um, in the, the event was in November. So around September, mid-September, I decided to work on winning. Because now I wanted to win at the time. Because now, now I'm, I'm in position I'm in position one. And I remember hey, it, there was a group chat where people, the contestants were talking. And I remember telling them, have you people, well, this is not how I phrased it, but it was something to do with um, position one last year had the highest votes. And they told me that doesn't mean this year, s because you're gonna have the highest votes, you're gonna win. And it, 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 it went through my heart. Yeah. I was like, yo, you think so? And now I decided to work. Um, Mid-September, I started going to the gym every single day and training every day. I was training every day and gymming every day. So like a bit like five hours of my day were dedicated to this thing. And I did it, became better and better. I became like proud of myself every day. And now we went to the boot camp. Uh, but I had done lots of research, lots of research. I knew what to do in the boot camp, what not to do. And now it, it, it came to, was it 5th? 5th yes, of sorry. November. We went to Eldoret and now the boot camp has, had started. I knew you have to be disciplined, you have to keep time, you have to yani, be at your best, you know. And uh, yeah, I'm, I was doing good at the gym because I was training. So <laughs> I was so happy because I felt like my, my training, the, you know, the things I was doing before the event were coming to, how do I phrase it? Like they, Help were, me. they were changing and transforming you and yeah. they're aiding the entire process. Yeah, it's yes, not just they were like aiding the process. Yeah. That's the thing. And so I, was do I think I was doing okay in the boot camp keeping time, um, if it's presenting, I'm presenting like I'm here, you have to listen. And uh, basically just being at your best, because now it's a camp, you're being awarded, you don't even know the judges, first of all, you oh. won't like look at, you won't befriend anyone. Oh. So it's just like, do your best, you don't know who's judging you. You don't know. I like that. I really, I feel like personally I want to join the agency. <laughs> yes, <please do. laughs> because just aside from the pageantry, you learn discipline, you're learning skills, you're being motivated. And another thing I've taken from that, your haters will push you. <laughs> like someone can say something thinking Ooh. they're breaking you down, but they're motivating you. So I'm really inspired by that. I want to read some comments from Facebook, then we can take a short break. 
and come back and continue with this conversation. I'm very fascinated by <laughs> all the things that you're saying. So this is from Facebook. We have Don Dada who says Nico Insana and Julius Murege who says he's tuned in. Thank you guys for watching us. It's very lovely for all of you to tune in. I want you to ask questions. I want you to ask our winner and the director if you if you may be curious about you want to model, you want to be a pageant winner one time, what questions do you have? You can write, even if it's a comment, an opinion, share that with us on our social media platform. I want us to go on a very short break, but we're talking about rewriting destinies and embracing second chances. So stay tuned to Y254 TV. I am Sherry Blessing, and this is the Power Talk Show.